Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Director of Consumer Engagement, Coldwell Banker Real Estate, David Marine. As Chris Brogan just mentioned, with over 600 million active users on Facebook, 2 billion YouTube videos watched daily, and over 30 million tweets sent every 24 hours, it's hard to argue that social media is not the most pervasive means of communication that consumers are using in 2011. But talking about the widespread use of social media is one thing, and incorporating it into your local real estate business is something entirely different. While you may have real estate experts that you learn from, Coldwell Banker has a trio of agents who are more than just experts. They are using social media to impact their bottom line and help their local real estate business. It's my pleasure to be able to moderate a panel this evening with three extraordinary agents who are going to share their best practices on how to use social media to help your local business. First, let me introduce from Coldwell Banker Preferred in Wilmington, Delaware, Maya Paveza. Next, next from Coldwell Banker Residential Brokerage in Beverly Hills, California, Christoph Chu. And finally, from Coldwell Banker Seacoast Realty in Wilmington, North Carolina, Jessica Edwards. It's two. All right, we'll jump right in. Jessica, uh, first of all, congratulations on the expecting little girl. Thank you. Let's give her a round Thank of applause. You. First time mother. And I'm sure many of the people here uh, recognize your face and that smile from the YouTube videos that you do driving in your car. And one thing that is curious to me is what made you choose video as a media to better reach your, your consumers? <laughs> Well, towards the end of 2008, YouTube was gaining steam and everyone was talking about video and how video was going to be the next greatest thing online and that's where it was headed. So at the same time, Facebook was getting more popular and social media and Web 2.0. So I saw that there was this opportunity to get on board and create a way to um, be personal with people and provide videos that weren't boring, that were entertaining and meaningful and connect with clients, prospective clients, and my sphere of influence. That's interesting, and uh, you, you mentioned not being boring, which I think is really important. So the content that you're, you're coming up with, and you're, you're doing two to three videos a week, where is that content coming from? Where are you getting these ideas for these videos? The content for my videos is truly my day-to-day -day life in real estate. It's things that are happening with clients, with buyers, with sellers, with other agents. It's things that come up online on Facebook, and it's truly my day-to-day -day life in real estate, and it's interesting things that happen, and I'm able to talk about it and put a personal spin and give a story on why that's important to know about if you're buying a house or selling a house. That's great. And Christoph, I know you do a number of videos too, which are also really interesting and, and great. Thank and you. one thing that is uh, surprising is a lot of people don't see social media as a tool to reach the luxury market. How have you seen social media impact reaching the luxury buyer, seller, and even luxury, uh, luxury properties, marketing them? Well, I find, at least in Beverly Hills in Southern California, most of the luxury buyers have a home in Los Angeles, New York, Dallas, maybe a place in Paris, a place in Hawaii. They're busy people. They're business people. They're executives. And what do they do? They go online and they go on Google. So social media is a way to capture them, and videos is a way to help educate them about the local communities. You know, we show videos on restaurants and stores and shopping, and I do video tours of different streets just to give them an idea of what the price ranges are, what kind of homes are there, the kind of people that live in the neighborhood. And I think people who want to buy a luxury home want to know because they're buying a lifestyle. They're not just buying a home. They're buying a way of living. And that's what we're trying to sell is the Beverly Hills lifestyle. That's interesting. And you also, I know you're, you're like the mayor of Beverly Hills on Foursquare, mayor of Rodeo <laughs> Drive. I'm waiting for my company car. <laughs> <laughs> and a number of other very notable locations within your community. How important is it to use social media to set yourself up as a community expert? 
Well, people look to a real estate agent um, when they come to a community to really help them find a doctor, um, where to go shopping, where to go to eat, where to go to the library, where to take the kids to school. So by being a social media expert, for example, on Foursquare and on Yelp, where I literally I make reviews of all of the local businesses. And those reviews are also on my website because I have the Yelp application on my site. And people can go to my site and learn about our local community, learn where to eat, where to shop, and how to live the life that they want to choose in the Beverly Hills area, just like they would in your community or yours. So it's a great way to really, you know, be a, as Gary Vaynerchuk once said to me, he says, be a DJ for the content of what's going on in your community. And if you can do that, then people will flock to you as, and think of you as the expert in the area. A DJ for the content. I like DJ that. DJ for the that community. Is, <laughs> that yeah. is a unique concept. Yeah. A DJ for the community. And uh, Maya, a lot of people know you from, from Twitter, being at Maya Ari Guru. But uh, you do more than that. You're on Facebook. You do a lot of different things in the social space. But you've created a really large following. I and mean, you think you have 20,000 people following you on Twitter. Your cloud score is better than a number of other competitive real estate brands out there. Uh, <laughs> How, it, how do you go about starting a following for the person who is, only has five followers on Twitter and no friends on Facebook? How do you go about starting to get to 20,000? Oh gosh, that's a great question, David, and one that I'm asked often. Um, there's no shortcut. It's, it's search.twitter.com. It's finding people with common interest, looking for people that you, know, you share passion with, whether it's dog breeding, yachts, whatever, but um, finding people that you have a connection with, a common point to sort of build that network and community and just be yourself, be a personality to some degree, I guess. People want, they want something interesting, they want something different. I mean, life gets a little boring at times and life gets you down sometimes, so it's kind of fun to escape to a place that you can imagine the rest of the case, I guess, the scenario. So um, connect with people, just find other people. I mean, honestly, I, I found another agent in my local market in 2008 when I started, and I followed half of her list and just kept going from there. <laughs> wow. Find people you like. <laughs> so true. So let me ask you, the, let me follow up with, the, with another question. Uh, you seem to be perpetually tapped in to what's going on in social, right? I send you a message, you seem to get back to me right away. How, uh, and I know a lot of agents out there are suspicious, like how do I balance the social life with my real life? How do you get that balance? Um, I'm probably not the best example, but when I teach and I work with my students, I say 30 by two is the rule. 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes in the evening, broken down amongst all the platforms. I mean, spend three hours on a Sunday morning writing your blog post. They don't have to be like, <laughs> they're not dissertations, they're not anything like that. I mean, 300 words or a quick video, something like that. But respond and reply to others, comment on blogs, look for good information to share with your clients to become the area expert. That's key. But it can't be the only thing you do. There are so many agents out there that are like, I'm on Facebook, I'm good. That's a closed community. You're not going to find your customer there. You might get a referral from a past client, but you have to look beyond that. This is the new prospecting tool. This doesn't replace expired calls, FISBOs, door knocking. It doesn't replace calling your sphere of influence. This is just a new tool. So you can't just get lost in Farmville. It's not how you'll get business. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Uh, I think all of you have experienced this, so I'll pose this to all of you, Jessica, if you want to respond first, is uh, social media has, it appears for all of you to expanded your reach beyond just Wilmington, North Carolina, Delaware, and Beverly Hills, and really allowed you to open yourself up to not just a national um, audience, but a global audience as well. Have you seen that uh, as well impact your business as far as people connecting to you from places in which you've never thought you'd, you'd be able to talk to someone? Absolutely. I have a client right now that's under contract on a property that was in Florida and wanted to relocate, was planning to relocate to Wilmington, North Carolina, and watched my videos and felt I was knowledgeable and trustworthy. Wow. And so it, it def definitely happens. I agree with Maya. You can't only sort of bank on that, but it, it adds to it, and people are out there and they're paying attention to social media. Crystal? I agree 100% and like um, Jessica with their videos. You know, two years ago when I found out Google was purchasing YouTube 
and they're gonna push the videos. I figured, well, everyone's got a 30 second to minute and a half attention span to watch a video. So let me start creating really great videos, which I use Rep Interactive that created a lot of our Coa Banker videos, to create videos of things that people wanna see and wanna learn about, particularly homes and the communities. And right now we've got three deals in process that are foreign buyers from England and from Asia that are buying 10 to $15 million homes that found a video, saw the community, called me up, and are here looking to buy real estate. So I think it's a great way to create exposure. And if you go to Google, and also part of, I'm sure you guys know that as well, is that part of this whole social media, the Twittering and the Facebooking and the check-ins, all this is part of an SEO plan to get your website number one on Google. Because if you're number one on Google for Beverly Hills real estate or homes or luxury estates or wherever your market is, you know, a lot of people are going to go to Google to start their search. And if they see enough of your content out there, they see video after video after video after post after post after post, and they're like, my god, who is this guy? Let me give him a call when I start my search in Beverly Hills. And it's something you all can do. You just got to do like Maya says. I do an hour or so in the morning. I do it in the evening. And then throughout the day, it's mostly done through my BlackBerry or my iPhone or my iPad. Just when I have a few minutes here or there waiting at an office or in traffic or whatever. <laughs> um, so just try it. You know, it works. We're all guilty of that at the stoplight, I'm sure. Um, you talked about, con about content. And Maya, where do you get inspired to share content. So Jessica talked about stuff in the day-to-day -day activity. Uh, for video, that's great. It's got one piece for you know, a minute long and, and you're done. But for Twitter, for Facebook, for a blog, where is content coming from? Where is an inspiration? Um, actually, let's tie it back to Mr. Brogan. Um, it, the Archimedes effect, like they talk about in Trust Agents, uh, it's what are you asked all the time? How's the market? What's, what's the value in my community? People want to know these things. So the questions you answer 5,000 times, answer them on your blog. Then they're there forever. You can reference it back. Answer it with a video. Um, just we do it all the time. And, and then if you give an educational speech to a seller about the listing process and the sale process, put it on video, put it on your site and they can go back and review it when they have questions. That also helps because you know we have to be consistent with every client. So when you're doing it that way, there's no questions. You know, and it's it's really good. And by the way, YouTube's the number two search engine. I know. Right. So that's why that, we're doing the videos. Absolutely. Videos are powerful. Absolutely. And uh, they'll be uh, Google will be here on Wednesday. Um, let me ask you, Jessica, uh, this question: What is the trap or a mistake that you find that a lot of agents are falling into when they're first entering? the social world that they should avoid? Two parts. I think that a lot of times people feel very overwhelmed and feel like you have to do it all and do it all right away. And it's important to have different outlets in social media, but don't get overwhelmed. Start somewhere. Just do something and do it well. I think the second part to that is what you choose to do, do it regularly, do it on an ongoing basis. Don't outsource it. A big part of this is personality, is letting your personality Jim talked about that, you know, um, show that, let your sphere, let these people see your personality. And so when you outsource it, it, it just totally lose all, loses all effectiveness. So. I agree with everything she's saying. One more thing I think for me is important. You're really not there to really sell. So if you look at my social media, I mean, we may do 25 to 40 postings a day. But if you really look at it, very rarely am I promoting a specific listing. If I have yep. a new listing, I'll promote it one time. An open house, I'll promote that open house. But it's not like every day I'm blasting people, new listing, new listing. It, that gets boring. People don't want to be sold. I just create content about things that are going on. From, and you know, I'm in Beverly Hills. So there's a lot of celebrity parties and interesting events. But you could be in a beach community. You could talk about the surfing competitions. But talk about things that are interesting to you. I mean, I talk about the farmer's market every week and the farm animals there and the chickens and the, you know, buying the nuts and the orchids there. I mean, that's interesting to me, and I think people didn't even know there's a Beverly Hills farmer's market where you could buy fresh I produce. I did not know that. So I just, I think you have to do what you love, talk about what you know, and one thing about searching content, if you've never heard of it, it's called Google Alerts. You set up a thing on Google, you type in keywords that are important, you know, whatever it is, and every day I get maybe 45 emails a day from Google. Any content that comes out on Google that day relating to those keywords, I get the email with 50 or 60 articles, I go through it, I pick the ones I want, and then I, re again, DJ of content, mm -hmm. I repost that article out in the Twitter sphere, you know, you know, internet world, and then people read that, and if it's interesting, then they're gonna go to my website, and they're gonna eventually call me. Well, I share with the, the group here, what is, if they walk out of here today, focusing on, on one thing to do, 
in the social space uh, as they leave Generation Blue. What, what would you share with them? Well, besides join, oh, anyway. Um, <laughs> understand why you're there. Don't just let somebody tell you you need to be in this space. Understand the concepts, the reasons behind it. Like I say all the time, read trust agents. Chris and Julian really know what they're talking about, and it will help you understand the interactions, the community. Uh, try it. Don't be intimidated. You know, it, swimming looks easy, but if you've never taken lessons or just slowly waded in, you're going to drown. But don't be overwhelmed and ask for help. There's a whole community of people, and we all want you to succeed. There's enough business for everybody out there. Share, be generous, help others, and be kind. And I'll just throw this out to the group. I know all of you have had sales and business come from your activities on social media. But there is also the person out here who does it for a month, two months, doesn't see a sale right away. How do you combat that, and, and what can you tell them to say to, keep, to encourage them to keep going on? Keep trying. Keep trying. It's there. It's the connections happen. They may not reach out to you from the social spaces. You have to take it to face to face. Going to tweet ups, going to local events, getting involved in your community, teaching your local businesses how to do this. It's micro local. Forget hyper local. It's micro local. You have to go and be the neighborhood expert. When you help others do it, they're going to trust you. They're going to know you. They're going to recognize you, and they're going to rely upon you. And once they sort of know you in that social space, they want to take it to face to face. And right. that's when you make the conversion. It's happened many times. And I think, David, also, it just takes time as in anything, learning the skills. And I, for my SEO experts and my now conversion experts, because it's now all about how do we convert 33,000 hits a month into good business. The reality is the average buyer may look at your site today, but it takes them 18 months to gestate and germinate to actually buy a home. So if you're starting this process today, it just it takes a while. And I remember two and a half years ago, someone said, why aren't you on Facebook? I said, what a waste of time. I'm not, I'm not going to find buyers from Facebook. I said, I'm not going to do that. And then today, my friend Leah from Coal Banker in, the, in, in our area said, do you remember when I downloaded Facebook on your BlackBerry for you? And I'm like, yeah, that's right. Just give it a shot. Just take one day. Go, go to your room tonight. We have an extra hour. Go on Facebook. If you're not on sign up, and play with it. Have fun with it. Don't make it this big, ugly, and scary thing. And referrals. Other agents. Yeah. Stephanie Hans out there. These people that I've met from other companies and other offices around the country. Mike, where are you? Mike Bowler. You know, Bobby Howe. A lot of these people that I've met in the social spaces. They're and all also there for us to learn from. Really, really quickly, it's not just about sales. I mean, yeah. when, when you, the, you want people when, in your area, people that know you, that trust you. When somebody says real estate, you want them to think of you in your name. And social media is a way to do that, to stay in front of them. And so don't go into it just expecting to look for those sales. Think of it as a way to keep in touch with those people and to gain and get in touch and, and stay in front of more people. It's Serve becoming that trusted agent Yes. and a community expert, being that DJ of content. That's all the time we had that one real quick. But uh, thank you so much, some great insights. Please seek these people out at the party afterwards and throughout the conference, talk to them. They're a great resource to get some ideas from. Thank you so much for participating. Thanks so much. Thank you, David. Thanks.